and we'll see uh, who jumps up in the, the joint with me. <clears throat> Let's see. I need to share the link. Oh, boom. Okay. He's not, you know, I'm real, I'm into WWE and whenever they talk about him, they call him the heavyweight champion of the world. And it's just so funny. I mean, I know they've got to do their little marketing stuff, but it's like, what belt he got? What belt he got? Oh my YouTube channel. Let's see. We'll talk some WWE. Boxing, WWE, power. Hey, ice cream combos. What's up, girl? Xavier. Man, now that's a good website for you guys to follow. You know, if you want kind of like the news, but not the bullshit, then uh, go follow ice cream combos. Very, very fine work over there. I haven't seen you in a long time, Xaviera. It's been too long. Let me see. I'm gonna tweet. You know, I'm feeling just chatty patty. So we'll see. Oh, what's up, Terrence the Chimp, AKA the Hood Ric Flair. You know, I was just telling them that I'm gonna um, talk about some WWE, but on my. Uh, on my YouTube channel. Well, I've got the YouTube channel going live right now. Oh, somebody's already on there. Hi, I don't mean to ignore you YouTube channel. I'm trying to do the live and do the, the IG live and the YouTube. So I miss you too. Um, yeah. So we're going to talk about some stuff here. If this stupid dog starts barking, don't mind him. It's probably, uh, the mailman come in or something like that. But if you want to watch me on the YouTube, because I'm going to switch over to the YouTube pretty soon, and plus my battery is getting uh, a little low. On YouTube, it's Bad Culture TV. Hey. Um, oh, thank you. Thank you. I just got out the shower, so it's still wet. You know, I've been stepping up my, uh, my workout stuff. So, you know, I've been hitting the gym in the mornings in the mornings trying to get myself back together because I want some new opportunities. And when you live in Los Angeles, they don't like to give a lot of oper TV opportunities and network opportunities when you're fat. So I can't get mad. It's just the way it is. You try to um, create your own lane and do your own thing, but it just is what it is. Oh, hey, you know what? I'm live on the thing and my baby is FaceTiming me. So I'm going to talk to her while I'm talking to all of you. So it's connecting, I think it's rainy. Hi, Kaya Simone, I'm live on YouTube right now. So be mindful of what you say on the tubes of you. Can you hear me? Hello? Let me call you back. Well, anyway, so yes. Um, Two people in here. We only got 50% in likes. Exactly. Hit the light. Okay. We got two likes. We got two likes. Okay. You guys, um, you know, make sure you hit the like button. Um, okay. So anyway, hello. Hello. Three people. Um, yeah, four people. Hey, you guys, Bad Culture TV, Bad Culture TV. Turn on over here. And we can talk about, you know, some different stuff today. Uh, we could talk about some boxing. Oh, I can't see what the, um... oh, it's Ant. Okay, cool. Ant, you know what I really like when you're on these lives? You are a good um, administrator. Hey, thank you for switching over. I appreciate that. You know, topics in the in the chat, you know, I have some topics in mind that, I want to talk about, but it may not be what you want to talk about. You know, me and Anne, of course, we big boxing folks. So we're going to talk about that. I feel like I'm just too naked for y'all. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my jacket and I'm going to, I'm going to do it like this. Boom. Then now I don't feel like my niece say I'm too naked on camera. So I'm going to rock it like this. I look like I'm in the, in the salon chair. So we're going to rock it like this. Hello, ubiquitous. What made you choose that name? For those, if you're confused, if you're looking at me on the 
YouTube. I'm also talking on IG Live. And so I'm saying hi to both of y'all back and forth and whatnot. So if I'm looking crazy, that's why. But um, yeah, so what, what do we talk about today, uh, everybody? My daughter, as some of you, what's up, Fawad? I'm on uh, my YouTube as well. Um, my daughter is on a college trip, as some of you may know. I miss her. She'll be back on Thursday. She's just now telling me she's at the African American History Museum, and she bought a book called Never Caught by Erica Armstrong Dunbar. Have any of you read that? If you have, let me know. Maybe you and uh, the mini could get into some type of uh, virtual discourse. I'm hoping this um, trip, if nothing else, has inspired her in some way. That's my biggest hope. And she got to see some things that she normally wouldn't see. Ubiquitous, being present everywhere. It's like the title of a ninja and I'm a word nerd. I like word nerds. That's dope. That means you're intelligent and you're well-read and you can articulate yourself. So I like that. Um, for those of you who are in here, any updates on Errol Spence? Good question. I haven't heard any updates on him, on him yet. Um, <clears throat> all three of you know that he was in the uh, car accident and they said he walked away and he survived and he didn't have any broken bones. But beyond that, I haven't heard anything else about him. I found this cool clip. Um, you know, his, his partners really, really love him. Like, uh, the Charlos. And I remember once when, uh, the Charlos and tank and all them were having their beef when they were out in New York, there was some fight card. I can't remember what exactly it was, but there was some discourse amongst the Heyman stable and they were all fat fighting back and forth and talking mess to each other, whatnot. And Errol Spence was the peacekeeper. And, um, I remember Charlo saying something about Spence broker in the piece. And um, I found this clip of, of Charlo talking to me and I asked him about it. And I said, is it true that Errol Spence is really like the peacemaker? He was like, yeah, people don't know that about Errol Spence. You can call him whenever you want and you could um, get all the counseling you need. And it was just so funny how he said it. And it was really sweet and it was really genuine. So, you know, those Texas guys, they really love each other down there. What does my daughter want to do with herself? She wants to do something creative. She wants to work, she says, for um, Pixar. She wants to be the studio head of Disney or Pixar one day. So that's kind of the path she's on when she was young. She had this real ability to create sets and things, like making things to scale. Like she would make like little Barbie food and and just all kind of things. And she was really good at that. And um, she likes the arts and those types of things. So she told me the last time I asked her, she wanted to create a platform. I won't say what the platform is because I don't want to, you know, give her stuff away in case she decides to do it one day. But um, yeah, man, that's what she wants to do. Um, so yeah, Errol Spence resting comfortably by his side. And I guess just taking a low, low profile, taking it day by day. And uh, we wish the best for him. And also um, for the fighter, Patrick Day, there were people, um, you know, saying that the man passed away. And I'm glad that I didn't say too much about that. But he's still hanging in there as far as we know. And um, it's just very sad. And the open letter that his opponent wrote to him following the fight, you know, saying that he wished it never happened. That's not what he wanted. He just wanted to win the fight. And he was thinking about quitting. Um he was thinking about quitting boxing, but then he thought about uh, Patrick and he said that, um, you know, that's not what Patrick would have wanted. He was a fighter. He's a champion. And, you know, the best way he could honor him and what happened in the fight was by continuing to um, fight as a, a true champion and dedicate every fight to him. Let's see. So, what you know, what do you guys think about that? There's six of you in here now. Um, I'm guessing you might be boxing fans. If you're not, let me know. Um, I remember that Deontay Wilder used to get a lot of grief when he said he wanted a body on his record and other fighters have said that too. I mean, they're fighters. And now you have, um, forgive me. Let me pull up his opponent. 
Um, uh, Charles Conwell. And then you have Charles Conwell here who is uh, very sad of what happened, who actually may have that be his legacy if something happens to Patrick Day. So, I mean, what do you guys think about that when fighters say that they want a body on their record? You know, does it disturb you? Some people don't like that. Some people say it's just, you know, hype for a fight that they don't really want to. Sorry, y'all, I'm going to have to do the the IG stream like this because I am, um, the core won't stretch further. What do you guys think about that? When fighters say that they want a body on their record, fair or foul, let me know. Well, maybe since the thing is like that, I don't have to look retarded and I can put my, my jacket back on like a normal human being. Or maybe I'll just leave it off. Maybe I'll just leave it off. So let me know what you guys, what your thoughts are about that. I don't think any fighter goes into the ring with the intention because a true fighter, boxing is a gentleman's sport. It's a sweet science of bruising. And I don't think any um, champion or any fighter, period, not just champions, go into the ring with the mindset that I'm going to kill somebody. You know, I don't think not a single fighter has that mindset when they step into a fight. So yes, there are five of you in here and I only see four likes. So please press the like button because all of that engagement helps my channel and it helps recommend it to people. If you would like to donate to the super chats, there is this beautiful green dollar sign button at the bottom. Click it, donate to the channel. I'm going to be going to, um, keeping on the boxing train, I'm going to be going to see um, Andy Ruiz this weekend. So stay tuned to my channel. I'll be going down there. I'm not going to say where. I'm going to go link up with uh, Andy Ruiz this weekend and talk about the fight. I want to talk about that. I want to talk about the fact that people from Mexico and certain Latin American countries can't go to where the fight is being staged in Saudi Arabia because they won't grant visas to those people. What kind of shit is that? Andy Ruiz is Mexican, but he like, if he has family in Mexico, that's balling that can, or even if they're not balling people who just have their money or he wants to pay for them to attend his fight as a champion, they can't go to the fight because they won't get a visa. That's some bullshit. Yeah, I agree with you, Ubiquitous. Ubiquitous, are you a writer? And if you are, where do you write? Let me know so I can check you out. Because anybody who uses Ubiquitous on a regular basis is somebody I'm trying to read their writing. Um, yeah, I've been, um, I've been reading that. And uh, yeah, Anthony, I agree. Because I bet if, um, I wonder how the reaction would be if Canelo said that, or Triple G, or even Kovalev. Hell, Kovalev, Got some trial stuff going on right now, but he's still getting fights. So what's the guy's name of uh, the brother? They took his fight opportunity away because he had the, um, like a uh, domestic issue. It was the guy who fought top dog Thomas Williams and he's the champ now. He was supposed to rematch Jermel Charlo. Harrison, Tony, not Tony Harrison. I can't think of... Um, the fighter that had the assault charge, but they sure snatched his fight opportunity on up. That's whack. But back to this, um, not meaning to jump topics and everything. No, not Erickson Lubin. Um, let me see. Fight off. Let me look it up real um, quick. Sorry, y'all. I want to give you factual information. But they took his um, his fight opportunity away. Same with Victor Ortiz. That's an even more recent example. When Victor Ortiz had the um, the rape allegations, they took him off the card. He couldn't fight. They wouldn't let him fight. And um, it was felony sexual assault. Uh, what was the other fighter? There was Victor Ortiz. Um,
sorry, you guys, I'm trying to keep it chit chatty, but, um, yeah, they called his fight off. I can't remember. Maybe he was supposed to fight Kovalev. I don't know. No, he wasn't supposed to fight Kovalev, but anyway, yeah, there was a fighter who's, um, Fighter was called off because he had the felony assault charge. What's up, EJ Boxing Live? But yeah, you know, Kovalev has got this court case pending. It's going to happen in like two or three weeks. He gets to fight for the biggest payday of his career. Kovalev is going to get, I don't even know what he's getting, but we know it's at least $5 million. I know it's more than that, but he's getting at least $5 million. But Victor Ortiz couldn't even get his little, his little PBC fight because he had a, a felony... Um, felony sexual assault. From the way I remember it, they said that Kovalev was putting those paws on a woman. What's up, Jerk562? Hello, nephew. Hello, nephew. If you want, I am over also live on my YouTube channel, Jerk562. If you want to uh, jump over and talk to me there as well. But um, yeah, I just can't. EJ Boxing Live, do you remember which fighter that was? Um, the one that beat Thomas Williams, who had like a felony. You know what? Why don't I just pull up the box rec for Thomas Top Dog Williams? And I'll tell you exactly who the fighter was, if I'm remembering correctly, that um, his fight was called off because he had a domestic. Marcus Brown, that's his name. Marcus Brown. Yeah, his fight was called off. Let me pull up some old stuff. Wasn't he the one that was, uh, didn't he have a fight canceled because he had like um, like an assault issue? Yeah, so yeah, exactly. Trap House Boxing, exactly. Marcus Brown. So Marcus Brown had a fight get canceled. Victor Ortiz had a fight get canceled, but Kovalev still gets to go on and fight Canelo. Where's the, the, that's whack. That's, that's very whack. <laughs> so, I mean, not that I'm advocating assault or anything like that, but, you know, allocate the same rules, same rules, same energy for everybody. If they can't fight, then Kovalev shouldn't be able to fight either until his court case is settled. Period. Period. Um, yeah. I'm, and I'm sure if we went digging deep enough, we'd find some other examples. But those are the two that jump out in my mind. Marcus Brown, a domestic issue. And um, Ortiz, a sexual assault issue. Assault is assault is assault. If Kovalev is out there allegedly putting the paws on women, then his fight should be off too until after he goes to court. That's what I say. But uh, coming up this weekend... There's a good fight going on. Yay, there's five of you and there's five likes. If some of you have come in after and haven't hit the like button, please hit the like button and engage my channel. That makes me very happy. And I pick up new subscribers when you guys do that because it helps my engagement. And my little channel is a little engine that could and a little engine that could needs all the help it can get. You know, they have all these other channels are super duper huge and and all that. And I wish I would have done things differently when I was first starting out in media and, um, you know, been all about the video, all in the video. Thank you, dog star baby. Can you hit the like button for me? I appreciate you. And, um, let me write your name down. If you all have, let me know if you all have channels and I will follow you back. EJ boxing. I already follow you. Um, all this helps the engagement, but I, um, I would have done things totally different and been more about the video. But at that time I was about, all about, you know, trying to write and try to do other things within boxing. And I should have been right here with y'all. I should have been right here with y'all too. Yeah. Vosdick better be of this weekend. That's going to be a good fight. Better be of it got some big hard hands. Uh, Vosdick have some, some good hard hands. I'm looking forward to it. Trap House Boxing. Okay, I'm going to write your name down so I can follow you or subscribe when I hang up the, the uh, stream. Shout out to my girl, Raging Bay, Michelle Rosado. She's been on the ground helping with the promotion of that fight in the Philly area. She's been working very, very hard. Mm -hmm. And um, she's out there in Philly on the ground helping with all of that. 
You're right, El Bacano. El Bacano? Am I saying it right? Bacano? Um, or Bacano. Um, you're right. You're right. You know, I started my channel eventually. And, um, you know, it's been fun. I think I'm more of a... Um, I like doing podcasts. I like doing interviews. I just like talking to people. I'm a talkative kind of person and I'm, I'm curious and inquisitive and I try to ask good questions. So, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Raging Babe is a very, very dear friend of mine. She and I have been friends for a very long time. You know, we call her Kaya, my, my daughter's auntie. Let's see. Uh, from my Instagram live, my buddy Ubiquitous wants to know who I'm picking in Friday's big unification bout. You've been asking us. What about you? I am going to go with um, Better Biev. I've seen more Better Biev's fights and I've seen what he's done, but it's still a pretty evenly matched fight. They're both pretty good. Hi, nine people. Hi, all nine of you. Can all not, if I see I have six likes and nine people watching or 10 people watching. So if you're watching and you haven't hit the like button yet, please hit the like button and help me with the engagement of my channel because, you know, I'm trying to grow. I want to get to 10,000 subscribers before the end of the year. You know, I haven't, you know, I'm not, I wasn't before all in the video, got your journalists all in the video dancing. I wasn't doing all that before, but you know, I might, you know, shake a little jig for you guys now that I'm more comfortable on camera, but I didn't used to always be comfortable on camera. So I see 10 of you watching. Hello, 10 people. And I have eight likes. So I need the other two people to, to like, or nine people. Or if you haven't liked already, like it. It don't cost you nothing. Let's see, Trap House. I follow up. Let me see. When I first subbed to y'all channel, Raging Babe was on there. Yeah, exactly. Me and Raging Babe and Jake Donovan from Boxing Scene, we used to do a podcast together. Originally, for you old school boxing heads that are watching, my original podcast back in the day was called The Ruckus. And it used to be on Thursday nights. And it used to be me and Ryan Bivens, Sweet Boxing. And then it was me, Ryan Bivens, and uh, sometimes uh, Brandon Stubbs, who does Punch to the Face Radio. Hi, new uh, tuner inners. Hit the like button. And then it was uh, the three of us who were doing it for a while. And then it was me, Ryan, and Raging Babe. And if you're really old school boxing rocking with me, not only did me, Ryan, and Raging Babe do a show, I also had Brett Mann, who is the trainer for Julian Williams, and um, Red Spikes, who's one of the trainers for Crawford, they used to do a show on my channel with Ismael Du Salam of Beats Boxing Mayhem. He moderated the show. So if you go back to like iTunes to the Bad Culture Radio channel on iTunes, you can listen to those old shows. And then after that is when Michelle and I, Raging Babe, were doing our morning show, the Morning Punching Show. And we started it on Fridays and then we moved to Mondays. And then it became me, Raging Babe, and Jake Donovan. So, you know, there's a lot of people out there who are not used to seeing my mug. But I've been doing boxing media for a long time. I'm not as uh, problematic and as some people or just out there like that. But, you know, every once in a while, people try to pull my card. And I have to remind them that I do know this boxing shit, too. I've been around a long time. And people love to talk to me. Hell, if I repeated half of the stuff I knew about boxing, it'd be wild problematic. But um, yeah, I enjoy the sport. I love the sport. I love the fighters. And um, it's a great sport. I'm pretty much down for anything with a ring involved. Boxing, MMA, WWE. But in the, in the terms of the order, boxing, WWE than um, MMA. But I'm growing to have an appreciation for MMA, especially when there's so many like women who are crossing over into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, look at that. We got eight watchers. We got eight likes. I love that. What else should we talk about? So thank you, EJ Boxing, for reminding us that we've got Vazdeg Better Be Of this weekend. Do you think Jared Hurd can come back J-Rock really seen. Yeah. I mean, Styles makes fights. I mean, look at the J-Rock that fought Jermall Charlo. 
You know, Charlo put the beats on him. But then you fast forward, things change up, and he um, fought against Jared Hurd and really, really put it on him. I think Hurd can bounce back. I don't know how he's going to bounce back if he had to rematch Williams, but he could definitely bounce back. He's still among the top of the of the division. If you're going to lose, that's the way you lose. You know, he didn't lose because he was overweight or he was lazy or he had some other nonsense popping. But um, yeah, if you're going to lose a, a a fight, that's how you do it. Hi, Yosebet. So I see there are 10 of you and um, well, now there's nine. If you're just now popping in, hit the like button, hit the like button. Thank you, Trap House Boxing. You're so sweet. Yeah, I'll for sure will um, like your channel when we're finished. Anybody else, if you're tuned in and you have a channel, tell me what your channel is. Um, tell me in the comments so that I can subscribe to your channel once we finish. You know, I don't get people with that who are so, so stingy with their subscriptions. It's like... Bro, it don't cost you nothing to hit the subscribe button. If you know somebody and they have a YouTube channel, unless they're just sa saying some crazy, outrageous ass stuff that you just don't agree, don't agree with, you know, in a philosophical way, hit the like button. It doesn't even cost you anything. Hit the like button. Hi, nine of you. Hit the like button. Let me switch back to ubiquitous here. I'm um, looking forward to Teddy Atlas. Yeah, that's going to be fun to hear. Clean fighters who lives the cleanest outside of the ring. We see a lot of people padding and ballooning up in between bouts. What about the guys with, who are ultra disciplined? From what I can, from my own observation, I would say the fighters who live the most disciplined outside of the ring of this common era who are currently fighting. I'm not going to get into, you know, like Floyd, because we know Floyd definitely does. I would say... Um, Bud Crawford for sure. Bud Crawford was still on, was on vacation re recently and still had a full like 12 pack. Crawford for sure is very disciplined about his body and his health. Cause even when he doesn't have a fight, he's usually in Colorado with his camp. Um, Julian Williams keeps himself in sh Uh, Golovkin doesn't really let himself go. Canelo doesn't seem to blow up too much. Um, uh, Danny Garcia, Leo Santa Cruz, Mikey Garcia, all of them stay in pretty healthy weight range. Um, Sean Porter for sure stays in a healthy weight range. Um, Spence, you know, he might pick up a pound or two, but you know, nothing crazy. No one's ever seen a video and went, damn, Meryl Spence looks fat. You know, I just doubt you'd ever see that. Hi, friend, friend Dom. Bud was in Hawaii and my buddy hung out with him. Guy was in strip clubs, all that. And he only had two beers the whole night. You know, I've hung out with Team Crawford before in New York. And I've never seen Bud drink anything. Ever. Ever, ever, ever. And I've seen a lot of fighters get toe up that you don't hear about. And the Vegas... If you go to Vegas fight, when the fights are at the MGM, pass by that lobby bar and people are in there getting turned. I'll tell you a funny story about the lobby bar. So <clears throat> for those of you who've been to the MGM, I'm sure you know where the lobby bar is. You have to pass it en route to go to where the, um, the garden arena is. If you're going to watch a fight, hi, all 10 people, make sure you hit the like button. Um, there is a beautiful green money sign at the bottom. That is for super chat. So if you enjoy me running my mouth, go and hit the little super chat. And so we can keep the Wi-Fi on up in this house. So anyway, uh, yeah, Tank and Broner get, they get big. They get big for sure. But um, so the lobby bar, back in the day before I started being a part of the media. What's up, Fernando? Um, I'm live on the YouTube too. Shut up, dog. But I'm in the lobby bar. And this is before I am... Um, medium there on my birthday. Cause my birthday's in May and I would go out there cause you know, everybody knows May is Floyd, Floyd Mayweather <laughs> weekend, single to my weekend, but my birthday is May 14th. Write it down. So anyhow, I'm in there and I see everyone's taking pictures with this, a handsome man and I'm nosy. So I went over to him and I go, why is everyone taking pictures with you? What do you do? 
And he goes, oh, I'm a fighter. I said, oh, okay, what's your name? He goes, my name is Bryant Jennings, who we know to uh, be uh, B.Y. Jennings out of Philadelphia. He fought at heavyweight. He fought um, Ortiz and he fought uh, Klitschko. And so, you know, if you follow heavyweights, you know who Bryant Jennings of Philadelphia is. So he was real sweet, real cool. And, uh, you know, chit chatted with him that same night in the lobby bar, uh, the late Joe Jackson, Michael Jackson's dad. Do you know this mofo hit me up in the bar, like shoved me out of the way? I wasn't even touching him, punk ass. Made me believe everything Michael was saying was true. <laughs> Errol speaks. He says, I'm a savage, period. Yeah, Errol Spence is, um, he don't play around. And, you know, the thing with all that dedication or whatever, um, Errol Spence is a really nice guy. What's up, KO Artist Sports? You see me in here running my mouth? Hit the like button because I know you. So go on, hit the like button. Um, Fernando, jump up in the uh, the YouTube uh, video. I'm live on Bad Culture TV. I'm talking to the IG live too because I've got my phone over here because it's plugged into the charger and I'm talking to all of you. And um, I like talking to all of you, you know. Hit the hit the hit the subscribe button if you're not a bad culture subscriber. I would appreciate it if you did. Hit the like button. El Boss Hall. Alcohol can make you miss your calling. Your, yeah, I don't want to speculate on what um Spence in particular was doing, but yes, I agree with you. Another thing about alcohol that people don't talk about a whole whole lot, alcohol can affect your skin. So if you have fighters that you see with a lot of cuts and stuff, you know, alcohol makes you have thin skin. That's why some fighters cut easier than others. That's your tip for the day. So if you're fighting, chill on a liquor, especially around these areas, because when you lose weight, these are the bones that start to come out first. Me, I like to, I don't like to drink, drink, but if I lost weight, so, you know, I'm, I'm pretty big, I'm thick and you can see my bones already. So imagine if I'm a fighter and I start losing weight and my face becomes very small, how prominent these bones are, especially people of African descent. We have some very prominent, you know, bone structure that would be susceptible to fights. Like guys, Fernando, look at this. We got Fernando, we got Steven, my brother is up in here. We've got Trap House Boxing, EJ Boxing, Dog Star Boxing. Hi, everybody. Oh, Lit J, <laughs> Lit J is a good time. Lit J is very, very fun. So yeah, um, KO Artist Sports, if you haven't subscribed to his channel, he's got some good stuff. Um, you know, watch his channel. He's got some good stuff. The Fight Guys, Fernando, who works for Behind the Gloves. Very, very good stuff. Check out his channel. I liked when you guys did the, um, you guys were doing the show together, Fight Guys. It was a good uh, a good show. Trap House Box. Yep, I stayed at MGM Grand for Pac Bradley. Yeah, so you know what it is. You know what it is at the MGM Grand. Um, it gets, it, that lobby bar is like the den of evil. No matter how hard you try to avoid it, you're going to end up in the lobby bar drinking with somebody. The last time I was in the lobby bar, true story was me, KO Artist Sports. Um, actually, you know what? <laughs> Maybe that story ain't for everybody. But you know what? It gets lit in the in the lobby bar. I've broken up a fight in the lobby bar before. I wasn't in the fight. I just broke up the fight. But yeah, I've, I've had some, if I could write probably some short stories on just what happens in the lobby bar at the MGM Grant. But yeah, and I'm going a, I'm to a leave KO Artist Sports out there. Still. We, we'll laugh about that one when I see you next time, KO Artist Sports. But yeah, look at all of you hitting the like button like y'all have some sense. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Hitting the like button. Billie Jean, get down. Did nobody call you? Um, so yeah, what else should we talk about? We got better be up, uh, Vazdek, Canelo Kovalev. So Canelo Kovalev, let's talk some more about that. So they had the uh, call this week and I guess people were really pressing Kovalev on what if Canelo goes to the body essentially is he going to fold you up like a lawn chair. Oh, give Billie Jean a feature. Come here, boy. Come here. Come here. Come here. You want to be on the live stream again? Come here. All that damn bark. Come here. Yay! It's, 
It's the bad culture mascot, Billy Jean. Woo! Billy Jean need a haircut. He look homeless. Say what's up to everybody. What's up? He misses his sister. His sister will be back on Thursday. But um, so Kovalev said during this uh call that he is um he doesn't understand why everybody thinks that a body shot will be so devastating to him in the Canelo fight. What do you guys think? Does, does the uh, the body shot, the Canelo body shot, potentially fold up Kovalev? I mean, Kovalev liked to drink. We know that. So does the, uh, the body shot fold him up? What's the way to beat Kovalev? If you guys are Canelo and you're familiar with Canelo style of fighting and Kovalev style of fighting, we know that Kovalev is going for the KO. Canelo is a, a series of aggressive actions meant to kind of just take you down. So if you're Kovalev, how do you fight to beat Canelo? What do you guys think about that? Hello, person. I think it's ubiquitous who is still on my IG live. But yeah, if you're if you're Sergey Kovalev, how do you fight to beat someone like Canelo? Millionaire. Millionaire Radio, Jab, Jab, Jab. It's all about the jab. Millionaire Radio, let me write your name down so I can subscribe to your channel too after this is over. So Millionaire Radio says the key to a Kovalev victory over Canelo is the jab. Any other thoughts? KO Artist, KO Artist Spores, Anthony Fernando. What's the key to the Kovalev victory over Canelo? Ubiquitous on my IG says Canelo has to work on the inside and get past the jab. And that's the key to victory. Anthony, you say be an athletic boxer. That's how you beat Canelo. So we've got the jab. We've got Canelo has to be on the inside and um, Kovalev has to be athletic. When you look at Kovalev's past fights, you know, I mean, I'm sure it's ultimately going to be a non-factor. I'm just super interested just to see the weight, just to see Canelo that big. Or maybe he might not even weigh in that big. Maybe he might just, you know, put on a few extra pounds. But what if he puts on all that weight and it makes him slow? Uh, Fight guy, simply Canelo needs to rope a dope Sergey a bit and counter to the body. Let's be honest, Kovalev's body has been worked on by Ward, and Ward isn't known to hit as hard as Canelo. Good point. El Boss Hall, Ko Kovalev just needs to protect the body and keep Canelo at the end of that jab and drop them heavy rights when he can. Don't be afraid to stink the joint out. Yeah. If they're fighting to entertain the crowd, entertaining the crowd is going to get somebody knocked out. They're going to have to, what do you call it? A war of attrition. Ubiquitous. Kovalev needs to make it a boring fight. Stay on the outside. I think Canelo can be outworked. Just don't see Kovalev outworking the younger guy. That is from our buddy Ubiquitous, who is on the IG live. Uh, Sergey has actually ha actually some really good boxing. His jab is really good, but Canelo's defense has, and his natural counter reflexes will do in Kovalev. Those are some those are some very very good tips. Hi Sylvia. Um, yeah, when I envision what I think that the the Kovalev Canelo fight is going to look like, I think that. For one, I don't think Canelo is going to be putting on a gang of weight to make the fight competitive. I think that too much weight slows him down. I think at the max, I think Canelo weighs in at like 168 max, maybe 169. I don't know. I think that's max. And I think that the key to victory for him like you all say, is the counter punching and the, the body. I think, what do you think guys think of the footwork of Sergey Kovalev? Because that's going to be a factor too. We know that Canelo is going to try to cut the ring off, but he's going to need to step around Canelo in order to set up these offenses, these offensive opportunities. Does Kovalev have the, the skill set or the good uh, footwork to even make that possible? What do you guys think? Fern, you say uh, Kovalev comes in at, I mean, uh, Canelo comes in at about 170. Kaiju66 says, if Kovalev can stay disciplined like he did against Alvarez a second time, gives him his best chance. I think Kovalev has better footwork than Canelo. Hmm. 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So if you had to do the keys to victory, like Teddy, Teddy Atlas, water in the basement. So the key is the movement and stinking up the place. It's not about the power or anything like that. Correct? Correct? We all in agreement? It sounds like you guys are all pretty much in agreement saying the same thing. Kovalev has good footwork, doesn't faint the jab enough for a guy like Canelo who slips very well. That is from our buddy Ubiquitous. Fernando, um, Steven, Boss Hog, thoughts on a, uh, Kovalev's footwork. Does Kovalev have better footwork than Canelo? What do you guys think? I just like how engaged everybody is. This is pretty dope. We'll, we'll marinate on it. We have some time. I'm going to be heading to Vegas for the Canelo Kovalev fight. Um, I'm not going to do the whole week-long festivities like I usually do during a pay-per-view fight weekend. I am not staying there for hella days. Um, you know, Ryan Garcia is on the undercard. But other than that, I'm not going to be there for hella days. I'm going to go there probably for the weigh-in and for the fight itself. But other than that, dang, my hair is turning gray already again. But other than that, I'm not going to stay there a whole bunch of... Uh, a whole bunch of days. I'll be there for the main stuff. You know, who all is on this undercard? Let me pull up the fight and let me see if we have a few more details because this fight is what? Two weeks away or so? Let's see. Let me pull up Canelo's box right here and let's look at the fight card itself and let's talk about what fights are on there. Hi, Trench. Sick. Trench God Drip Goddess. I uh, think that that right. Hello. Thank you for tuning in. You can jump over to my. I'm on live on my YouTube channel too, Bad Culture TV. If you want to um, tune in there. So let me pull up this uh, this Canelo fight card and see what we got cracking on here. Because, I mean, you know, I've been a little, it's hard to keep up. Oh, that's right. And you got that whole top rank card that's happening the same night. Why would they do that? Where you've got Burchelt Sosa fighting on at the same night at the uh, Dignity Health Sports Park. StubHub. I don't like calling it that. Javier Fortuna's fight the same night, too, on Fox Sports 1. Javier Fortuna's going to fight against Jesus Marcelo Andreas Cuellar. And Brian Castano is going to fight Wale Omotoso. I didn't know that card was the same night, too. Anybody else fighting that we know? Okay, so on the card for the Canelo card, we've got Canelo Kovalev, Garcia Duno, Bakrom Murtazalia versus Jorge Forte, Sinisa Estrada versus Marlene Esparza. I want to see these little broads get it cracking because they do not like each other. And Evan Holyfield is making his, uh, it's Evander Holyfield's uh, grandson is making his pro debut. Hi, Tracy. But uh, Sinisa Estrada and Marlene Esparza, these two girls is about to get it cracking. If you guys ever want to see some comedy, just go watch some old interviews with Marlene Esparza talking her mess about uh, Sinisa Estrada. I remember seeing one. I feel like KO Artist Sports, I feel like you filmed that interview where she was talking about, ain't nobody trying to see no Sinisa Estrada because she fights like this. I feel like uh, KO Artist Sports has that interview and it was pretty funny. Let me see. I think Diaz and Masvidal fight is the same night too. Good God. Hope they got some good Wi-Fi in the arena. Let's see. I doubt he knocks out Canelo. I doubt he knocks out Canelo too. We need good Wi-Fi in the arena of the night of the Canelo Kovalev fight. Oh, and for you guys watching down here, we need good Wi-Fi in the arena. Because there's a lot of fights going on that night. Um, so yeah, that's so far. That's pretty short card. 
Um, well, I mean, main events doesn't have a ton of fighters, so there's that. And then um, Golden Boy has been doing so many different cards. They, they're they doing the Facebook series. They've got their other DAZN stuff. So I don't think they got enough people to put a whole bunch of fights. Uh, it might be a welcome change because we know PBC cars is like 18 fights deep. So a short night is not always a bad thing. Hello, Raj. Hi, Deuce here, 20 and Raj HSS7. Hi, you guys. I am on also live on my Bad Culture TV YouTube channel. So if you guys want to pop over there and say what's up. You know, if you'd like to donate to the channel's building fun, there is a green icon with a dollar sign. You just click on that and, you know, hook your girl up. It keeps the Wi-Fi and all that. It keeps the cell phones on and all that. You know what I'm saying? It makes it possible for we can do our <laughs> the royal we, because by we, I mean me, the uh, the best coverage we can. You know, I'm a one woman show. I don't have a camera person. I don't have an editor. You know, when you see me out on the grind, you're going to see me and me. Me, my tripod, my mic, my camera, and me trying to spit out some questions. So, you know, definitely, if you will, donate to the channel's building fund. And if you don't want to use the Super Chat, the Venmo, PayPal, all that information is listed below. Win or lose, who does Canelo fight next? Now, see, that's the real question because Canelo's fight deal with DAZN, if I'm not mistaken, is 11 fights, 10 fights. Um, let's see. How many fights in Canelo's DAZN deal? <laughs> 11 fights. Canelo has 11 fights fights that he has to, that he's committed to for DAZN. He is currently 52, one and two. Canelo's been pro since 2005 and he's only what? Three fights into this DAZN deal, eight fights. Canelo has eight more fights. And I know we're not getting triple G Canelo three, four, five, six, seven, eight. He got eight more fights. He ain't fighting Andrade. And everybody Andrade who Andrade would fight probably won't take the belt off him. So Andrade, now he's changing the tune up and saying that um, he's down for the Triple G fight if it makes business sense. So now he's like, oh, you know, I might fight Golovkin again. You know, it might be a good thing. But um, beyond that, let's just say he even went on a hardcore run. So he's got eight fights. Does he stick around at 172? Let me pull up the, bo the current boxing rankings too. So we can really talk about this. That's a great point. Let's see, Fight News. Shout out to the good people at Fight News because they keep their rankings up to date. If I don't visit Fight News for nothing else, I for sure visit them for their, their rankings. So, well, you know, so since Canelo likes to, to, to hop, skip, and jump around the, the weight classes, he won't go down as low as 147. We know that. And he probably won't go down as low as 154. So let's just say that he hovers around somewhere between 160 and uh, 172 or whatever. Uh, let's see. Let's even, let's just give him the benefit of the doubt. Let's just say he changes his mind and he fights Andre and he fights Charlo. We know that ain't going to happen. And let's just add, let's say even Chris Eubank maybe. And then we look at, and that's contingent on all of them winning. And then we look at super, we've got a uh, Callum Smith and Dave and Billy Joe. Billy Joe Saunders and David Benavidez, who are at the, the 168 mark. And then above that, at the light heavyweight mark, we've got Vosdick, who's going to fight better Biev, and we've got Dimitri Bivol. So we've got Vosdick, Bivol, better Biev. Although that's only really two fights because 
he's probably going to want to fight the winner maybe of Gavazdik and better be So that's like seven fights. That's seven fights. That's still not enough fights. That's still not enough fights. Who the hell is he going to fight? Any ideas? I'm, if you had to predict, let's assume that he gets past Kovalev. Is he going to stay and fight the winner of Vazdik Better Biev? Does he jump back down and fight Callum Smith or Billy Joe Saunders? If we're taking our bets right now, I think Vazdik Better Biev is going to be a bloody ass mess. And whoever wins that fight is not going to be available for a while. I think his next fight's going to be Billy Joe Saunders. That's my pr my prediction. He goes down no matter what. It's gonna be this is gonna be some stuff. Do you think the world is gonna explode if Kovalev puts Canelo down? Not even if he just wins a fight, but if he just actually puts Canelo down. I ain't never seen Canelo down before. Or you know maybe I'm just getting see now, but I don't remember ever seeing Canelo down in a fight. So, you know, what do you guys think? If it is it better be a Vosdick winner or does he fight Billy Joe Saunders? Billy Joe Saunders is at 168, fought at 168 before against um homeboy from England, uh Rocky Fielding. What do you guys think? Or and even Jacobs, even Danny Jacobs. So, you know what's next? Millionaire, he goes, well, I know I'll probably make some money if that happens. Hey, you just might. You are Millionaire Radio. And as Millionaire Radio, when you make some money, make sure you bless your people at Bad Culture TV and hit the super chat button. Make sure you hit the super chat. But I don't know. I mean, that's a lot of fights. Eight fights? And you're already... So that means when Canelo finishes, he's already at 52. What did I say? 52, one and two? Even if he won all eight of his next 61 and two. And how long is it going to take him to get through this deal? Like, what is the contingency? How many times a year does he have to fight? Two times, three times, four times? Like, I don't know. There's just so much we don't know. There's just so much we don't know. Let me take a look at Twitter and see if anybody's talking about anything of note from the world of boxing. We know that folks have their eyes fixed on Philadelphia for, and remember better be of uh, Vosdick. That fight is on Friday. If I'm not mistaken. Yes. It's on Friday, not Saturday. If you try to watch the fight on Saturday, that's going to be too late. I'm going to turn off my, Oh no, I was going to turn off my live on IG and just keep talking to you guys here on what you call it, but someone's there. Hello, Danny. That's a lot of fights. Billy Joe Saunders could be a bad style matchup. He's hard to look good against. Hey, that's not his problem. He just need to win. He got a lot of fights. He have to fulfill, man. We're inching up. Oh, we got a, you know what? We have some different people in here today. Early predictions for, um, Anthony Joshua versus Andy or Andy Ruiz versus Anthony Joshua uh, rematch and fair or foul that people from Mexico can't get visas to go to the fight. That's pretty whack. Pretty, pretty whack. If I was Mexican and I was who riding for Andy, Andy Ruiz and I couldn't go to the fight and I had my chips to be able to go to the fight, I'd be pissed off. So who is going to go with Andy? How is Andy Ruiz? Well, he's an American citizen, but you know, what if his cousins and them want to come to the fight? We know he got the dough to bring them to the fight, but they can't get a visa to go to the fight. That's some bullshit. I call bullshit on that one. I'm going to end my, my IG live here because I think that it's pretty much finished. Shout out to everybody who made their way here by that, but that's trash. Let me find the exact language with regards to Andy Ruiz's people. People, Ruiz versus Joshua visa information. But yeah, there are a number of Latin countries that 
are being denied visas. Like I know for I know for uh, I don't think Jewish people can go there either. That's whack. Regardless, I'm gonna find the exact information. They're just not granting certain countries visas to come to to Saudi to watch the fight. I'm trying to find the article. Um, let me see. Visa information for Ruiz versus Joshua. Let me see what I can find for you guys and share the information. I have some complaints. People were talking about they couldn't get tickets or whatever. Uh, I can't find it right off hand, but I'll talk about it on Twitter probably at some point during the day, but yeah, certain people can't get visas. That's pretty whack. Because they're doing the visitor be the visitor visas. But um, yeah, I need to find out what that was. Yeah, you definitely, if you've traveled to Israel or are Israeli or Jewish, I don't think you come in at all. Yeah, people from 49 countries. Here we go. Let me go to the Matchroom site. People from 49 countries can. Uh, here we go. Here's what I'm looking for. I'm going to look here. Visa visits Saudi eligible countries. So the eligible countries are obviously the US and Canada all the European countries for the most part and Asian countries. Ain't no Mexican, ain't no Mexico. Basically, if you speak Spanish, if your country speaks Spanish, unless you are from Spain, you can't go to the fight. Cause I'm looking at, I'm gonna put this uh, link in the chat here where you guys can see this information. If you from a Spanish, there are no Central or South American countries who can attend. And there are no African nations that can attend. So if you black or Latino, you can't go to the fight. What kind of shit is that? Maybe Anthony Joshua's people from Nigeria want to come through. They can't get a visa. You have to be from Canada or the U.S., pretty much any of the European nations, Asia, and within Asia, they include Brunei, China, Japan, Kazakhstan, Malaysia, Singapore, and South Korea. Or you can be from Australia or New Zealand. And those are the other only countries that can um, go to the fight. Pretty whack. Mr. Just Because. Hi, Mr. Just Because. Hit the like button. We're talking about how people of Latin or African descent cannot attend the Joshua versus the Ruiz versus Joshua fight. You have to be American, Canadian, European, or Poly, Polynesian. Just hit it on Twitter or you on YouTube. Thank you. Well, I appreciate you. Thank you for joining. Um, we also talked about some uh, Canelo versus Kovalev and what Canelo needs to do to win and what Kovalev needs to do to win. But uh, Mr. Just Because, if you have a YouTube channel, drop it here so that I can subscribe when I end the stream because it will be ending soon. We've been gone for about an hour. 
But yeah, that's that's pretty whack. You know, what if my cousins from beliefs want to go to the fight? What if my cousins from uh, Senegal want to go to the fight? Very, very whack. Very, very whack. Especially since Ruiz is Latino. I don't think that's cool. He might have some old relatives who want to come through. Yeah, it is a very tricky country and um, very strict society. And I respect anybody's culture, but for a sporting event where one of the combatants is Mexican and Mexicans can't go to the fight, that's just pretty whack. Just my personal opinion. But, you know, far be it from me to tell anyone how to run their country or their politics or government, whatever, because that is uh, their right. And I respect that. I just won't be taking my ass over there. I know that. Well, we have gone for an hour now, friends and family. I appreciate you all for stopping by. Remember to subscribe to Bad Culture TV if you haven't already. Before we sign off, if you want to donate to the Super Chat, hit the little green. Um, I think it's green. Is it green on the bottom, y'all? Hit it. I'm trying to see something. And uh, tell me. I think it's green. On my screen, it's gray. But I think on your screen, it's gray. But feel free to contribute to the uh, Super Chat. And uh, I thank you all for watching. Um, I'm definitely not going to pop up every day. You know, that's just not my, my lane. But I will pop in from time to time to uh, talk to you all. And uh, I like it. I like when you guys pop in and um, engage with me because it keeps me sharp. And it keeps me... Uh, thinking about boxing, what's going on and hearing about it from a practical point of view. So again, thank you, everybody. I appreciate you till next time. Peace.